Hey guys, this is Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I'm going to be discussing what a critical care medicine rotation in neurovascular ICU would be like and also neurotrauma. For those of you who are interested, whether you're a medical student, a physician assistant student, or even a physician assistant who is wanting to possibly pursue critical care medicine and go into neurovascular ICU or neurotrauma ICU, hopefully this video is helpful for you. Just a little bit about me. I am a physician assistant. I am currently completing a residency slash fellowship in critical care medicine. And this involves a year long residency where we rotate through 13 different rotations and different specialties of critical care medicine with those including neurotrauma and neurovascular ICU. So I just completed those two months. I did a month in neurotrauma and I did a month in neurovascular ICU. And I will be working as a future physician assistant in the neurovascular ICU and neurotrauma ICU once I complete my residency. So hopefully this video is helpful. So if you really, really like neurology, I really recommend to do a rotation if you can in neurovascular um, intensive care unit and neurotrauma. I loved these two rotations and this is coming from an individual who didn't like neurology as an undergrad and didn't like neurology even through physician assistant school. It was definitely one of my weaknesses, especially when it came down to my neuro exams. But com having completed this rotation, I ended up loving the neuro ICU. I ended up loving the neurotrauma ICU. I just fell in love with it. It was definitely a very, very busy rotation, specifically the neurovascular ICU, because I completed this rotation during COVID-19. And the thing is about COVID-19 is that it tends to cause what we're learning now, strokes in patients, especially your very young patients. So I was seeing 24 year olds, 25, 26, 27, 30 year olds, 40 year olds with strokes that were caused by COVID-19. And not only would they get one stroke, they would get multiple strokes and they would have these faster strokes, which are just terrible and would impair a patient and then of course make a patient brain dead and so this was something that i learned during my rotation and i know a lot of us also learned um, and we worked very closely with neurology on how to manage and treat these patients so just real quick what's the difference between neurotrauma and neurovascular what type of patients are you going to see so neurotrauma just like it sounds it's any type of traumatic injury to the neurological system, whether it's to the brain or to the spinal cord. So the type of patients I saw there were patients that, for example, had um, gunshot wounds, whether it were un intentional or unintentional. I would see patients that attempted to commit suicide, for example, by hanging themselves, any type of spinal cord injury. I had patients that, I had one patient, very young, um, he was doing a handstand on a motorbike with a helmet and he ended up falling and just crushing all of his cervical and thoracic spine and became unfortunately a paraplegic. Um, I had patients that were on bicycles that were not wearing helmets and they had these very severe traumatic brain injuries. We saw these diffuse axonal injuries. So those were the type of patients that you see in neurotrauma. We saw a lot of spinal cord injuries there. And we work very closely with neurosurgery during that rotation and also sometimes neurology but the majority of the patients are neural surgery. You would also get patients that were into the operator room, whether it was for an elective like laminectomy and they ended up having a complication and they would be transferred to our unit. And that's where we work very closely with neurosurgery. Neurovascular patients, we saw a lot of stroke patients. And like I discussed, a lot of patients with COVID-19 strokes, especially since I did this rotation during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we would manage these patients work very closely with neurosurgery and neurology. I saw a lot of patients with very weird disorders like the West Nile virus, which is something I've never really heard of. Um, other things like Guillain-Barre syndrome, ALS, for example, strokes, like I discussed, subdural epidural hemorrhages, subarachnoid hemorrhages, and that's basically the patient population that you get in neurovascular. Um, I see you. You work very closely with neurology and neurosurgery, like I discussed. And with these two rotations put together, I really got comfortable with neuro neurological physical exams because you're doing these exams daily on your patients. The nurses are fantastic in regards to the neurovascular exams. They do a lot more than I do, and of course, they're a lot better than I am. 
Um, you also tend to get very familiar with the NIH stroke scale because that's something that you measure when the patient arrives. And then of course, um, some, some of the numbers that you discuss in regards to whenever you're giving report uh, during rounds, et cetera. And so these are kind of the differences between neurotrauma and neurovascular ICU. And for those of you who are interested in neurology, you want to get better with your neuro neurological physical exams, you want to get better with brain, brain imaging, um, whether it's on a CT scan or an MRI, I really recommend this rotation. Uh, during rounds, I learned a lot. My rounds were very long in both neurotrauma and neuro neurological um, ICU. They were very long, but I did get to learn a lot in regards to just the pathophysiology of subarachnoid hemorrhages why are we having a systolic blood pressure cap for these patients? Why do they have a MAP floor? Why are we using this medication over this medication? What is a treatment after a stroke? Why are we doing this neurological exams, Q1 hours, Q2 hours? What do you do if the patient has a change in the neurological exams? I've seen, Kate, I've seen unfortunately, cases where we had patients that had a change in neuro, neurological exams and unfortunately it was not addressed in an appropriate time and the patient ended up having a repeat stroke or just ended up hemorrhaging even more. Um, I got very familiar with EVD drains. I got really familiar in regards to procedures also, placing femoral lines blindly or even with the ultrasound also placing arterial lines, bronchoscopies, central lines, etc. So I got really familiar with procedures in general. And then of course the ventilator. I think any critical care unit, you have to make sure that you familiar, familiarize yourself with just the ventilators. And I think the best person to learn from is gonna be your respiratory therapist. And I do have to say during this rotation, I you would get assigned patients. So there would be days where I had seven patients. Sometimes I only had four, depending of course of how many of us there were and how many of us there were, I mean, by how many residents were there. So we would get a resident usually from neurology, sometimes two one days that were lucky. So two neurology residents. I would also have a resident from ENT. And then of course myself as a physician assistant resident, and then we would have fellows. So our fellows were either uh, surgery fellows or pulmonary fellows so which, or even emergency medicine fellows or uh, neurology fellows and we would all work together. Sometimes there would be days where it was only three of us so that's where we had about six or seven patients each and that's a lot because these patients are very very sick especially our COVID-19 patients they have the stroke they have the acute respiratory distress syndrome you have to ensure that the patient's getting proned at an appropriate time. Does this patient need a bronchoscopy. On top of that, do they have a, a pneumonia? Did you descent a uh, BAL? Has it came back? You need to change antibiotics for the patient that's more sensitive for the pneumonia that the patient has. And the thing about COVID-19 is that these patients get really bad pneumonias and then on top of that, they get fungal pneumonias. I had one patient that came in that ended up having a unilateral cranial nerve 6 palsy. Within a few hours, he started having a bilateral cranial nerve 6 palsy and just significantly started getting worse within that night where he required to be intubated because he lost his cough and gag reflex, which are some of the cranial nerves, right, that we think about. So he just started significantly using, losing a lot of his cranial nerve reflexes. And we sent everything on him. We sent infectious panel, which include West Nile virus. Even um, we sent West Nile virus. We sent the, and I apologize if I do not say this cor correctly, Fruitsful Jacob test. Uh, we sent everything neurological wise because we had no idea what was going on with him. And then within a week, he started improving. He started getting back his uh, cranial nerves, which was very interesting. And we were working alongside neurology, infectious diseases, because we had no idea what was going on with the patient. So sometimes there was cases like that. We had a gentleman also that came in that he started having paralysis. We had no idea what was going on with him. We ended up sending a West Nile virus and ended up coming back positive. So sometimes you have really cool cases like that, um, which are very interesting. And sometimes you get very sad cases like the strokes. So I saw a lot of brain death exams during these rotations, which were very interesting. Uh, during school, I remember I had, if anything, one lecture, not even like less than a few minutes on brain death exams. And I saw an osmosis video on it and that was it. 
but here I got to see several of them. I saw a lot of death, which was very sad. Um, I had to familiarize myself on how to give bad news to patients, families, um, and it's something I still struggle with and I have to keep working on. But in general, these, the, these two rotations were fantastic. I really recommend them for anyone who's interested in neurology or just in critical care medicine in general. You're gonna get very familiar with your neuro exams, with your scans and then procedure wise also. I had some medical students that rotated with us that were interested in internal medicine and then possibly critical care medicine in the future. This is a great rotation if you wanna do anything like that. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you. For those of you who are wanting to possibly as a physician assistant or even a nurse practitioner pursue a rotation or a career in critical care medicine, uh, definitely consider possibly neurovascular or even neurotrauma ICU. I love these rotations, highly recommend them. You see a little bit about everything. You get really good with your neurological exams and your procedures. All right, thanks for watching my videos and I'll talk to you guys later, bye.